Kamusta po mga kabayan? Narito pong muli ang mga maiinit na balitang ating sinusubaybayan sa mundo ng social media. Mas proud pa rin si Atty. Trixie Cruz Angeles sa dating administrasyon ni Tatay Digong kaysa sa administrasyon ni Kuting ngayon na kadahi, sa kadahilanang sa dalawang taong niyang nakaupo bilang isang presidente ay wala pa rin pagbabago. Sinabi pa niya sa kanyang panayam na lahat ng accomplishment ni Kuting sa nakaraang dalawang taon ay ang mga nasimulan na noon ni Tatay Digong noong siya pa ay nakaupong bilang isang presidente ng ating bansa. Iyong akala ng iba na naputol na ang sumpa ng mga na makakaliwa sa ating gobyerno noong umupo si Tatay Digong na presidente pero muling nabuhay dahil nalamang kontrolado ng makakaliwa itong presidente natin na si Kuting ng Norte. Kaya naman, wag na nating patagalin pa at panoorin ang buong video. At kung bago ka pa lamang sa aking channel, huwag kakalimutang mag-subscribe at pindutin ang notification bell upang lagi kang maging una sa mga balitang naglalagablab at bago. Ayon sa isang netizen, kung walang boses ng presidente na para sa demokrasya ng bayan, wala talagang mangyayari sa bansang ito kundi himagsikan ang kahahantungan. Kung pipigilan nila tayong magsalita, kanino tayo magsusumbong? Kanino tayo magsasalita kung hindi tayo makikinggan? Kung hindi tayo pakikinggan, paano sila magpapasya? Ay naman sa isang netizen, ang mali natin, we voted and supported PPBM. Strongly agree to Attorney Trixie, PPBM should know what he is doing. Kung ganyan yan sila, gusto niya talagang magaya sa tatay niya as what FPRRD said. Ayon pa sa isang netizen, Kailan ba papababain si House Speaker? Ito yung dahilan kung bakit umalis si VP dahil maagang pamumuliti ka. Hindi nila madiktahan si VP, hindi naman kaya sa pilitin si Speaker na sa Presidente lang ang key of peace for peace. Nagagala kami na nakita ka namin sa isang interview that you were is, uh, discussing yung punto ng number one, Uh, there is really an effect na chilling, nakakatakot, nakakabahala dito sa nangyayari sa SMNI, sa mga program, sa mga uh, independent digital media personalities like you na ngayon ay isa ng uh, social media digital yes. personality. Also, na, oh, yeah, yeah. also, attorney, can you make it dikit sa uh, uh, what you also said about the, the importance of leadership yes. in, in all of these things that's happening right now. Okay, thank you. Attorney Trixie, you have now your time to tell the people how you view things right now. Lalo na po doon sa take off ng iyong uh, pagpapahayag na nakakabahala ang kalagayan sa malayang paghahayag at pagsasalita na ginagarantiyan ng mga batas natin lalo na ng saligang batas. Go ahead po, Attorney Trixie. Uh, sumampa ang ating pangulo bilang leader ng ating bayan with a lot of good plans. Marami siyang, uh, marami siyang na pag-aralan na tungkol dun sa mga problema ng bayan. At nilahat niya ito dun sa kanyang zona, zona number one. Nakikita natin dito na niririspeto niya ang kalayaan magsalita at magbahayag. Pinuntirya niya ang uh, presyo ng pagkain, tubig, kuryente, uh, transportasyon. So ngayon, sa gitna ng maraming problema na nakikita natin, Natural, i-expect ng isang leader na may mga aangal sa taong bayan. Ini-expect natin ang kritisismo. When things don't go well, kasalanan mo man o hindi, expect mo ang taong bayan ay magsasalita. Pero yung pagsasalita na yon nakikita natin may opresyon na. Hindi na ito basta may napipikon, hindi ito simpleng bagay na uh, may nagtatampo. Doon sa isang sinabi mo, natural yan, tao yan eh. Hmm. Pero, makikita natin, may systematic oppression. Hindi na po ito basta-basta. Hmm. Halimbawa, uh, in, alam natin, may mga networks dyan na ini-endanger ang prangkisa. 
may mga na-detain, may mga natanggal sa trabaho, Tama. gawa ng utos ng isang mataas na opisyalis. Tapos, hindi lang yan ha, nagbabayad ang gobyerno, or at the very least, hindi nila sinasalungat yung balita na may mga trolls na binabayaran ng gobyerno para atakihin ang ordinaryong mamamayan na nais lamang magsalita at magpahayag ng kanilang damdamin at saloobin. Sa gitna ng mga krisis, may krisis tayo sa uh, Korean. Wala. Wait, uh, sorry. Okay, uh, Attorney Trixie, uh, mukhang uh, nagkaroon ng interruption po sa inyong huling mga sinabi. Yes, Try natin again. Okay na po. Okay, okay go. Po. Okay. So, na, nakikita natin sa gitna, may krisis tayo sa kuryente. Hindi nila pinag-uusapan yan. Mm. Nagtaas ang presyo ng tubig. Nagtataas ang presyo ng pagkain. Sa gitna ng lahat ng ito, ang unang nilang naiisip, baguhin ang saligang batas at matahimikin ang ilang mga taong nagsasalita at nagpapahayag. Mm. Saan ka nakakita na gano'n ang reaksyon? Na imbis na at tupagin ang solusyon sa mga problema na alam naman nila kung ano yung mga solusyon na yon ay ang aatupagin nyo yung kritisismo. Yes. Ang aatupagin, pagbabago sa saligang batas. Na hanggang ngayon, hindi nila ini-explain kung ano ang specifics nun. So, natural, magtatanong tayo, nakikita natin may mga government officials, nagpapabaya, sino bang in charge sa tubig? Yes. Sino bang in charge sa kuryente? Sino bang in charge sa deteriorating conditions ng ating environment? Marami tayong problema. Pero yung mga kalihim, parang wala tayong naririnig sa kanya. But the buck stops with the leader. Exactly. Kasi natin sa leadership na yan. Kung ang mga tao mo hindi nagpo-perform, natural magtatanong ang taong bayan, Mr. President, ano na? Hmm. Pero anong nakukuha natin? Uh, maswerte tayo kung dead ma lang eh. <laughs> But instead, may oppression. Yes. Bakit ganoon? May problema, pero you shoot the messenger. It, it, now, hindi na, binigyan, ito yung maganda pa niya na, binigyan natin ng oras. Hmm. Hindi po ito first 100 days. Hindi ito first six months. Patigidig na tayo, magdadalawang taon na. Pero anong nangyayari? Instead of more information, we get less. Instead of more service, we see less. Tapos, napaplay up pa yung leisure ng ating Pangulo. Mm -hmm. Concerts, parties. Can you blame the people if they are upset? Can you blame the people if they will criticize? But what are the reactions to blaming and criticism? Oppression. It's not how government works. Mm -hmm. Mayroon tayong guarantee ng free speech na kalagay sa saligang batas. No law shall be passed abridging the freedom of speech or for, of expression. Tama. Sinasabi dito, nililimitahan yung power ng gobyerno na limitahan ang ating kalayaan magsalita at magpahayag. Pero, imbis na respetuhin, imbis na i-uphold ang saligang batas pagdating sa ating kalayaan magsalita at magpahayag, eh nadidiminish pa. So what are, what, are, what are we expected to do? Alam niyo ba na the right to free speech is a social valve? Nagre-release siya ng pressures. Yes. Mm. Siyempre, di ba, nagkakaroon mm, ng correct. social pressures, societal pressures. Mm. Uh, poverty alone is one of the biggest pressure system, pressure, uh, pressures on society. So, binibigay ng saligang batas yung pagkakataon na makavent ang taong bayan. But instead of venting, you see threats. You see threats on re removing franchises, removing hosts, uh, flaws. You see accounts on social media getting taken down. And the worst part is, walang explanation. Yeah. Attorney, Walang ka ma. Yes, attorney, uh, attorney, attorney, attorney question. So, attorney, yeah, attorney question. So, uh, itong oppression na uh, that you're talking about right now, is this the first time that you're feeling it? Is this the first time that you're experiencing it? Oh, oh definitely. Kasi kahit noon, matagal na tayong nag-aactivate activist. Uh, to, you know, I was really proud of the Duterte administration, but before that, I was a government critic. And in all my years before that, under Noy Noy, under Gloria, I was always uh, a very active critic 
but not once was I threatened with the loss of my livelihood yes. for ano for saying something. Yes. At yes. Post, kinakausap nila ako sa sabihin, bakit mo sinabi to? Bakit ganito? May mga ganon. Uh, may papadala sa akin na government official at sasabihin, alam mo, hindi naman yan yung intention ng gobyerno. Pero there was movement on their part. They would somehow address the criticism. Pero they would never tell me na tanggalin ka namin sa ganyan. Attorney, attorney so um, under the under PRRD, no, when I worked with him, the very clear understanding of PRRD that uh, press freedom and freedom of expression is of utmost importance. It is, uh, these are rights above all other rights, freedoms above all other freedoms, because it will redound to the good of the country. No? So, um, so my question to you, attorney, in other words, no, in other words, the former president had a very deep understanding of what democracy is, and he was an astute ex chief executive. No, he, he wasn't he didn't care what others said, but what the press said. He just kept on kept keeping on, diba? So, maliwanag sa kanya, I'm here in government to serve the people, diba? So, at saka, wala siyang tinatago, diba? So, ang tanong ko kasi dito, kasi itong nakikita ko ngayon, napaka, napaka praning ng administrasyon na ito, at napaka-sensitive, no? Napaka-sensitive, na, na simpleng dissent ay parang hindi nila kaya. So, my question, does it mirror, what does it say? Does it say that uh, the sitting president has no idea what it's what it is like to be an executive? Is that what it means that he has no idea what his what his job is? Is that is that is that uh, a, a clear um, reading of what's going on right now? Ganito yon, Doc. Eh. Yeah. Um, if he doesn't know, he ought to know. Yeah. It is his mandate. The yes. Supreme Court has already said public officials cannot be on your skin. Uh, criticism is a vital part of democracy. Kaya na demokrasya ito. Kasi may dynamic. Government must listen to the people because government gets its power from the people. The entire mandate of the whole system of government rests on the people's choice. When we go to the polls, when we elect them, and yes, when we suffer their governance, it's all because we give them that power. And they are in power simply because we allow them yes. to take power. So The least that they can do for us is listen. Yes, Attorney, so uh, you are a student of history. Yeah, you are a student of history. Yeah. And I strive to be one as well. So what happens to an administration that turns a deaf ear on its people? Pag, kasi ma, na, uh, mukhang ayaw nila ng batikos. Mukhang bawal yun, no? Uh, mukha bang may papayag dito? Wala namang papayag doon kasi demokrasya tayo. No? So, what will happen to an, an administration where they do not listen to the people? Diba, we mentioned earlier on that the freedom of speech acts as a pressure valve. Without that pressure valve, yes. if you oppress or you suppress the freedom of speech, pressures build up. And what happens at the end of that? But there is social unrest. We're lucky if it's just unrest. Yeah. But then eventually these things could zoom towards something else. And we know we are, you know, we are no strangers to changes in government. It, we've had in the past, what, 40 years, we've had two. And then, but in the beginnings of our government come from a revolution. A revolution also brought about by increasing societal pressures. Mm -hmm. So he should take a page from previous rulers, those who have turned a deaf ear, particularly to concerns about lifestyle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. It's not something that we should ano, treat frivolously. The, the, the removal of two presidents were due to, the, to what people would see as excesses in lifestyle. Mm. So, Maybe he should, it would be a good idea for any leader to remember this. Yeah, correct. Claro. Attorney Trixie, before pa ako magpapatuloy, ipapasa muna kita kay Brother Franco. Very good points that you raise. Political authority can only become strong if it is founded on moral ascendancy where people put trust and confidence. Yes, uh, sa akin naman po, Attorney Trixie, ay may katanungan tayo mula sa ating mga netizens. Isa lang dito po is mula kay Boy George. Ito po. Ano na po ba ang direction ngayon ng communications team ng current administration ng bagong Pilipinas? 
Yes, Attorney Lee. Si would you like to comment? Ano po ako nila direksyon? Kasi hindi ba rinig ang Presidente? Mabuti naman doon ka. You are regularly updating the, the nation, the public. Now, wala kaming nararamdaman ng taong bayan ng tamang direksyon o tamang paghahayag sa mga mahalagang usapin na nagkakagulo na sa politika at pati sa ating kalagayang pang-ekonomiya, Attorney Trixie. The unusual thing is, yung regular press briefings at saka yung, yung the way we handled communications before was a policy set by this president. Mm -hmm. na yung two to three times na, na press briefings, uh, pag disasters, within two hours, the yes. media must be informed and the people must be informed Correct. of what is going on. When there is an issue, within so many hours, ina-address na dapat yan. Even if it is to say, we're looking into this, you must address it. Tell them that government is on the ball. We are doing something. It wasn't perfect, but at least we would be responsive. Mm. And it was the president himself who dictated that. The second policy was that government must speak with one voice. And so that we would look to the leader, Mr. President, these are the issues coming uh, that are at the forefront today. So which ones do we address immediately and which ones are still under investigation? Then he would point that out. So this was regular. We are not seeing that today. Wala yan ngayon. Yes, ang ang matakot niyan is merong this huge, this lavish, I'm sorry to use the word, mm. I don't like adjectives, but there's no way to express this, this lavish launch of bagong Pilipinas, yeah, which is touted to be a branding campaign. Seriously, why does government need a branding campaign? Mm. Government is government. We are complete in the branding. Hmm. We have the symbol. We have the national anthem. We have the flag. We have the skills of the various offices. Why do we need brands? Why do we need new logos? <laughs> Why do we need videos? Seriously. Hmm. And then what the need to declare to the people that we now have a Philippine development plan, which, by the way, was already launched last year. Correct. So what is that all about? Even in articulating his speech that they are now uh, moving towards a new Philippines, uh, he did not explain how we get from this point to the new Philippines. Uh, but he also did not explain why it took a year for the Philippine Development Plan to finally be a part of the, the <laughs> It's not part of the plans. Huh? Remember that Bagong Pilipinas was launched after the budget had been passed, mm. which means whatever is in the Philippine Development Plan, once again, may not have made it completely into this into next year's budget, ay, to this year's budget. Claro. Diba? Hindi na binigyan ng importansya yan. Binigyan nila ng launch. Oh. So, anong, anong sinasabi nito? Ito pa. Ni-require nila, government, mga kawani ng gobyerno na umatin, pakasayang sa oras. Siyempre, babayaran mo yun. Mm. OT yan. Yeah. Hindi naman yan yung regular hours ng ating mga kawali. Attorney Tapos, Trixie, may excuse me, hmm. ah, kasi ginawang mandatory. But we have to ask you, Attorney Trixie, no? maliban dun sa magandang pagpupuna mo sa rebranding na very unnecessary, lavishly, scandalously unnecessary, pinunduhan ng pundo ng kabanang bayan, may gusto kaming i-direct ang tanong po sa inyo, Attorney Trixie, sapagkat una po, bago kayo makilala, bilang uh, isang uh, social media personality and social media influencer, kayo po ay abogado by profession and by training. Attorney Trixie, yes. very obvious na ang NTC or National Telecommunications Commission, ang MTRCB ay gumawa ng mga lagpas sa kanilang kapangyarihan at mandato ng mga akto equivalent to direct and scandalous oppressive acts of abuse of power. And yet, these are agencies of government which are under the office of the President, Attorney Trixie. Ang tinutumbok natin dito, ang independent suspension, ang questionable na paulit-ulit na pagsuspend, pagpuna, na ang pressure point na kanilang binabanggit ay nanggagaling sa House of Representatives. Hindi po man lamang nagpahayag ang Pangulo ng Bansa or even ang kanyang mga cabinet uh, secretaries to clarify if this is also the policy of the President involving the two agencies under his office, MTRCB and NTC. Bilang abogado at mamamahayag, 
your reaction to those scandalous abuse and overreach of power ng mga ahensyang ito, Attorney Trixie? Uh, number one was, uh, one of the guarantees din ng ating saligang batas ay yung karapatan natin to due process. Mm -hmm. Ibig sabihin, di ba, no person may be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Correct. And a franchise is property. Yes. So, once na grant yan, bago yan tanggalin, kailangan may proseso. At sinasabi ng saligang batas, due process. Meaning, it is owed to us. It is owed because there is a guarantee sa saligang batas mm. at nakadefine pa rin sa batas kung ano yung mga proseso na yon. Isa dun sa mga requirements ng due process is a fair and impartial judge. Tama. So, nasan yung fairness and impartiality kapag ang mga ahensya nagre-react lamang sa rekomendasyon ng lehislatura ng kongreso tapos hindi na sila nakikinig sa ebidensya Yun. hindi na sila nagbibigay ng nararapat na proseso at saka ang bilis lalong lalo na ang NTC medyo kinabahan ako kasi uh, dito nakikita ninyo na uy pwede pala yung preventive suspension mm. na wala ding ring kasi kahit ang suspension ay preventive and oh by the way nangyayari usually ang preventive suspension sa mga administrative cases sa mga kawani ng gobyerno mm. para malayo sila sa ebidensya hindi sila magtamper with witnesses Tama. dito, inikot ko siguro preventive suspension because they're preventing further damage pero even <laughs> a preventive suspension requires a hearing dito, preventive suspension Summary. tapos hearing Saan po ang process doon? So, diba? although preventive suspension is not penal in nature, it appears to be penal here. Mm. Kasi galit na sila eh. Mm. Hindi <laughs> nararamdaman mo. Where is the fair and impartial judge kung galit kayo? But lipat nyo sa ibang tao, huwag kayo. Correct. And then, huwag nyo unahin yung suspension. Kasi yung preventive suspension in a case for franchises, yeah process immediate damage if if ito ay nasa hukuman administrative ito eh kung ito nasa hukuman hihingi yung hukuman ng bond correct para so, ano so ano attorney so attorney um my correct um i think that our country is in grave peril because the the very ones who are supposed to uphold the law are themselves the violators of the law in other words, yes, itong ginagawa ngayon, uh, yung paglabag ng batas natin ay with impunity, garapalan. Am I correct? Yes, at the very least, they are supposed, they are the people we look to yes. to regulate the industry, di ba? Yes. We are the people, we look to them to be fair, to be impartial. Kapag nawala yung impartiality na yun, who do we trust? Wala na. Who will the people go to? Kasi sila nga yung inatasan niyan dahil sila yung dapat magpagkatiwala. Yeah, attorney, may I please read ano? May I just please read the letter of the PMAers, the one that they wrote uh, in defense December. of me and Eric yeah, uh, why we December. were uh, and then I'd like you to comment on this. Okay, sabi nila no, the sac the sacrosanct rights are under attack. We sound the alarm that the freedoms of speech and press, the very lifeblood of our democracy are under siege when protectors of truth are persecuted for uh, invoking their legal rights it is a clarion call for all defenders of liberty to stand in opposition and it is the pa unwavering support for press freedom we steadfastly support the full implementation of ra 1148 any attempt to undermine this law is an attack on the, the very foundations of our democratic society Yes, Attorney Trixie, your reaction to that very categorical position ng ating mga patriotic uh, leaders mula sa security sector who graduated from the PMA last December. Ang ilang statement nito. Aware kasi sila na may guarantee dito sa ating saligang batas that the AFP is the protector of the people and of the state. Hmm. Kung ang mga magsulat man are active or not active duty, they at least remember this. Hmm. Ibig sabihin, pag umabot na dun sa punto na ang taong bayan ay namemeligro sa Estado mismo yeah. o sa gobyerno na nagre-representa ng Estado, obligasyon ng ating armed forces na protektahan ang tao muna. Yun. Norm 
di ba? Ang ang security sector, as you call it, the AFP is the the, the president, di ba? Is the the head, the commander in chief, mm -hmm. and under him are the armed forces. At inherent sa ating saligang batas ang karapatan ng estado to protect itself. Yeah. Pero ang saligang batas natin may garantiya. Kahit na namemeligro yung estado, kung ang danger from the state is directed at the people, the AFP must stand to protect the people. Yeah, that is the unique provision in the Constitution that you pointed out, Attorney Trixie, uh, na ginagarantiyan ang sovereign protection of the people must be guaranteed by the armed forces. At yan ay dahil may tendency na gamitin ang kapangyarihan at aparatos ng Estado na labagin at abus abusuhin ang mamamayan. And in between of that, the security sector, the armed forces, must be on the side of the people, on the side of the law, on the side of the Constitution. Tama po ba, Attorney Trixie? Correct. May, may garantiya din at may exhortation, kumbaga, ang ating saligang batas that the AFT must uphold the Constitution. Ayun. And therefore, yung constitutional guarantee to protect the people is also something mu they must always remember. Ayun. So kung aabot tayo sa punto Very na ang uh, more of our... I'm saying more ha, because a lot of our rights are already in danger. Pag more of our rights are in danger and the actual security of the people are now under peril, then they should remember that they have to uphold the Constitution, which guarantees that they must protect the people. Claro. Attorney Trixie. Thank you. Yan. Magaling. Attorney, muli at uh, napakaganda po ng inyong pag-explain at especially kung gano'n po ka-importante na unahin natin ang mamamayang Pilipino hmm. sa lahat ng uh, politiko man o even ang katayuan po ng ating Armed Forces of the Philippines ay talaga naman po nabigyan niyo po ng linaw sa programang ito. Gusto pa man po namin kayo makasama pa, Tony Trixie, pero sana po sa uulitin po next week or yeah. the next day. Sa, She uh, can always be part yes. of laban kasamang bayan resource persons. Yeah. <laughs> Muli maraming salamat. And we like your, yeah. uh, Tony Trixie, we like what you have pointed out. Ang malayang pamamahayag at ang malayang media sa isang lipunan mm -hmm. ay may katungkulan, hindi lamang to check the state apparatus and power na hindi mag-abuso kung hindi ito din ay social pressure valve that will prevent people na mag-alsa dahil mayroon silang pamamaraan na maghayag ng saluubin to petition the government na siya ngayon ang nangyayari unti-unti sa kasarkoyang gobyerno na hindi parang hindi natututo sa kasaysayan. Rightly pointed out by you, Attorney Trixie. Maraming salamat. Attorney Trixie, before you go, um, I just want to tell a story to all of you and I hope you listen. No? Uh, when we were detained uh, illegally, I was keeping a strong front no? and uh, my lawyer then, Attorney Cherry, was there. And I, uh, when my family had already left, no, uh, I, I wept dito yeah. sa lawyer ko. I said, ganito pala yung pakiramdam ng oppression. Yeah. Ganito pala yun. No? And then, but, but I was trying to keep myself yeah. strong. And I said, but I know naman it's nothing, Attorney, kasi compared to your other uh, clients, no, talagang napreso, talagang ganyan, this is nothing. And then she said, no, any oppression, it diminishes all of us. That's why we should all fight against it. And and um, my children are grown and they're very brave people. No, my children, my family. I'm very proud of them. But still, I saw, I saw how hurt they were, and I saw, I learned that when a mother is imprisoned, her children and her husband and all her loved ones are with her in prison. Yeah. And that kind of um, that kind of oppression, I will never forgive the the Marcos administration. <laughs> that is as simple yes. as I will. I will clearly state that this is on Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Attorney Trixie, there, that's my son. Thank you for adding yeah. your voice yes. to thank the you, real attorney. voice of the people. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you, Attorney Trixie. You will always be part yeah. of our journey for true freedom and democracy to thrive in our beloved Philippines. Thank you. Maraming salamat sa inyong panunood, mga kabayan. Kung nagustuhan ninyo ang video na ito, huwag kakalimutang mag-like at mag-subscribe sa aking channel para sa iba pang mga kapanapanabik na nilalaman. Hanggang sa susunod na video, ingat kayo at mabuhay.